The thing that led many researchers, including me, to study anoles is a remarkable pattern of diversity seen on the four big islands of the Caribbean, the Greater Antilles, Cuba, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and Jamaica. There are many anole species on each of these islands, but what is particularly striking is the parallels you see between the islands. So imagine you, you walk into a forest in, in Puerto Rico. You're gonna see trunk ground anoles, these stocky, brown, uh, low trunk specialists, perched facing head down on large tree trunks. If you walk around enough, you'll start to see uh, some green ones up towards the canopy. Those are going to be trunk crown anoles. They move continuously in search of food. Um, they blend in with the leaves. In the vegetation, you're going to see grass bush anoles. These lizards with long tails, they usually have uh, stripes on their back. And if you look very, very carefully, you'll start to see twig anoles, these you know, diminutive, tiny little lizards that are so hard to find that they weren't even discovered until the 1960s. And those are going to be creeping along uh, on, on tiny little twigs with the color of lichen. If you were to go to Abano Verde, which is this you know, remarkable site in the central Dominican Republic, you'd find essentially the same thing. You're gonna see trunk ground anoles, you're gonna see the grass bush anoles, they're gonna, they're gonna look like doppelgangers. They, they look, it's like a bizarro world of the anoles of Puerto Rico. The different forms of anoles are called ecomorphs. The ecomorphs are named for where in the environment you usually find them. Trunk ground, trunk, trunk crown, the crown giant, twig, and grass bush. It's amazing how similar species in the same ecomorph look, even when they live on different islands. So imagine you have uh, Anolis cristatellus from Puerto Rico and then Anolis cybotes from the Dominican Republic, uh, one in each hand. These would be incredibly difficult to tell apart. On this particular trip, I'm working with a colleague, Ian Wong, who, this is a guy who works on anoles. Uh, he's never been to the Dominican Republic. Every time he sees Anolis cybotes, he calls it Anolis cristatellus. They look that similar. The obvious question then is, why are members of the same ecomorph so similar? Why do the ones near the ground have long legs and the ones up in the trees have short legs? Why up in the tree do they have big toe pads and they're often green, and the ones down on the ground have smaller toe pads and are brown in color? One possibility is that they share certain traits because those traits help them move through the habitat effectively. The way we test that is basically by having the Lizard Olympics. We just do this battery of trials to quantify their functional capabilities. Well first, the crown giants and the trunk crown anoles. They have big toe pads and it turns out that those toe pads let them hang on very well to smooth surfaces, such as the smooth leaves that they're moving on high in the canopy. The trunk ground anoles have really long hind legs. That lets them run fast and jump far, which is important because their biology relies on those capabilities. When they see a prey item on the ground, they jump down to grab it. At the other extreme, on the twigs, you have the species with the short legs. For them, running fast isn't important. What is important, though, in the twigs is the ability to move with agility. And it turns out that's what short legs are for. It lets them move their legs right under their body and hang on very carefully. Long-legged lizards on twigs can't do that. And so the case seems very compelling that the features of the ecomorphs have evolved as adaptations for where they live. I think many people would look at the similarity of members of an ecomorph across different islands and assume that they're closely related, that, that being a twig and all evolved a single time and then they emigrated to the other islands and turned into different species. An alternative explanation is that they independently adapted to similar habitats on different islands. And reconstructing the evolutionary relationships, the evolutionary tree for this group of lizards can answer that question. 
if members of the same ecomorph on different islands are closely related, you tend to find them all on the same branch of the evolutionary tree. So you'd have one branch over here with the twig and alls, and one with the trunk ground and alls, and then another branch with the trunk crown and alls, and so on. Conversely, if the ecomorphs had evolved independently on each island, then you wouldn't find, say, the twig and alls clustering together on one branch. What you would find is that species on the same island tended to be on one branch, say Cuba over here, Jamaica here, and so on. We set out to build an evolutionary tree based on DNA to see if members of the same ecomorph type on different islands were closely related or not. Well, the DNA analysis was clear cut. Members of the same ecomorph type on different islands were not closely related. Rather, species on the same island tended to be close relatives. What this means is that repeatedly on, on Cuba, on Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and on Jamaica, we've independently had different groups of anoles, anoles which are distant relatives from one another, coming up with the same solutions to the same ecological problems. This suggests that evolution is very deterministic, very predictable. You put a colonizing anolis lizard on an island in the Greater Antilles, and four times the end result is the same. If you start with similar players and, and you assume sort of that you have the same rules, uh, you do indeed get very similar outcomes to this evolutionary game when it's played again and again. We use the term adaptive radiation to refer to the phenomenon when one ancestral species diversifies into different species adapted to different parts of the environment. Darwin's finches on the Galapagos are a classic example of this phenomenon. The thing that makes anoles so unique is that we have these four big islands and four very similar but independent adaptive radiations. This situation is called replicated adaptive radiation, and it's an amazing example of the power of natural selection.